Today we're reviewing the iRobot Roomba S9 Plus. There's a few funny things about this review in a way. We're actually reviewing this after the J7 Plus and I hadn't even used the S9 Plus before that because it's been really hard to get your hands on an S9 down here in New Zealand. It's also interesting to review it in comparison with the S7 Max V Ultra and the Ecovax X1 as they're both a bit newer. So it's interesting to see how it stacks up and in a way this review is almost done in hindsight to see how good it is in 2022. So after using the S7 Max V at the same time, you might expect us to be a little bit disappointed by the S9, which is obviously an older unit. However, there are certain things that the S9 is undoubtedly still the top dog. It is still the best vacuuming robot that we have ever tested, as you'll see in our tests later on. And it still does well in the navigation and all the general robot vacuum things. The auto empty dock still works really well. And because it doesn't have a mop on board, it isn't missing those features like the self-washing function, which the absolute latest robots now have. So it's still up to date in that regard as well. The only thing that the S9 doesn't have that the new J7 Plus has is the obstacle avoidance on the ground. However, in reality, I don't think that this makes quite as much difference as the robot marketing people want to make you think. And the truth is you still have to do quite a bit of prep anyway, and iRobot are quite good at getting themselves unstuck. I've obviously had a bit of interest in this robot for a long while before actually getting my hands on it. So I've watched all the reviews and I remember that some of the earlier ones, there are a few bugs and issues that people were having. And it seems that over the past couple of years, those bugs have been ironed out and the product's starting to get a lot more mature and it's probably actually better and more relevant to the market than it's ever really been. One of the unique things about the S9 Plus that's still unique for iRobot is the D shape. And the reason that they've done this is that the brush gets significantly closer to the corners and significantly closer to the edges and the roller brushes are also much longer. The interesting thing with having a wider roller brush is that it actually decreases the pressure output onto the ground because of the wider opening. However, the S9 Plus has about four times stronger suction power than most other Roombas, or I think they're saying 40 times stronger than the iRobot 690 model. So to really emphasize the importance and the difference that that D-shape makes in the iRobot roller brushes, we're just gonna compare it to a much more normal traditional robot vacuum. On this side, we have a very normal circle robot and we have a bristled roller brush. Here you can see that it's got bristles and every second one is rubber. The thing with this is that it will get a lot of hair tangled around it and you'll regularly have to take it out and clean it, otherwise those bearings will start to get a lot of wear on them. You'll also notice that the wheels sit outside of the brush, which means that when it's cleaning alongside the wall, there is approximately a 10 centimeter gap before there's any real suction or brushing, and the rest is relying on a much larger side brush to get those crumbs up against the skirting board. This side brush, as a result, actually ends up flicking a lot of dirt and debris around and it can actually flick it right past the main brush. Whereas if we look at the iRobot roller system here, we have two rubber ones which do an exceptional job. The first one here is to loosen the debris and then the second one here scoops it in. Regardless of the science, we know that it really works because a lot of the other iRobot Roombas have relatively low suction figures and still perform about the best on carpet. The thing that's unique about the S9 is that it is a D shape, which means that the brush doesn't have to sit between the wheels and instead it can run almost the full length of the robot. This means that there's only five centimeters gap to the wall. So when it's cleaning alongside the wall, it's cleaning nice up and close. And particularly when it goes into corners, it can clean it right into the corner and then reverse out. As you'll see later on in the cleaning tests, the side brush doesn't need to be as big. Therefore, it flicks a lot less around and most of it actually ends up in the dustbin itself. So I think that the brush roller system on the iRobot Roomba S9 Plus is without a doubt the best option on the market at the moment. There's only one minor con about having the brush right on the front there, and that is it is the first thing that will go over any cable or sock or whatever is on the floor. So I think it's slightly more likely to actually get stuck and not be able to get itself off compared with the other Roomba models. So despite the fact that it would record lower Pascal figures on the suction, 
it actually does a significantly better job cleaning and that wide roller brush is still one of the best things about this S9. The S9 is obviously still on a V-Slam camera like most iRobots. It's the older model, not like the J7 Plus. This one's still predominantly looking at the ceiling to get its bearings for navigation. This does an exceptional job at covering the whole area, however it's not quite as methodical or as precise as a LiDAR robot. In reality it doesn't make a huge amount of difference, but if you're a robot geek then you've got high expectations now and it isn't quite as satisfying to watch. As I said though, it will cover the whole area, it'll be slightly slower doing so and a little bit more bumpy into the walls etc. It is a smart mapping robot, that means that it saves its map and once it's got it saved into the app, you can then go in and you can add virtual barriers or no-go zones where you circle an area on your map and then the robot won't cross that line that you've drawn. You can also send it into specific rooms so that it will clean this room and then this room in a specific order and you can change settings on a room by room basis. Because the S9 only has a 75 minute battery runtime, this is particularly useful because it means you can schedule half the house then it will go home and charge and then you can schedule the second half in a separate clean. Otherwise, it will be going home to recharge and then it will resume exactly where it left off. The idea is that the battery life as a result doesn't really matter. However, in bigger homes, it can still be a little bit frustrating and you would want to do it while you're not at home. The S9 has this little beacon sensor which senses the base, but is also used for detecting the iRobot beacons. When we're looking at the bottom, we see that we have four drop sensors. So these detect drops that are big enough that the robot would get hurt or where it would get stuck. So obviously this means that you can use it upstairs and it won't fall down and you don't really have to worry about managing it. We have the two giant rubber roller brushes. The rubber roller brushes on the iRobot are what really separate iRobot from the other ones in carpet cleaning performance. And this means that in each pass, it's not leaving a big gap where the wheels would otherwise be. It also means that when it's cleaning aligned to a wall, it's cleaning right up to the wall. And the side brush is, as a result, a lot smaller, which means that it flicks less debris around and actually picks it up. We also have the two charging contacts and we have the automatic disposal outlet, which is sucked through the base here by a separate vacuum unit and can store up to 30 cleans, which is awesome because it means you can leave it cleaning for up to one to two months without having to empty it whereas you'd otherwise have to empty it pretty much every clean. The iRobot will automatically detect when the dustbin is full, another iRobot patent, and return to base, empty itself, and then continue its clean from where it was up to. This is unique to iRobot as they're the only ones that can detect when the dustbin is full. The wheels are a familiar sprung system, which is helpful if it does go of anything because it means that it will keep the drive power on the ground. It's fairly well balanced, which means that it can lift itself up over cords and cables or things that might be on the ground that it would otherwise get stuck on. Once again, it also has an optical floor tracking sensor. This is a little bit like an optical mouse sensor where it tracks the distance covered and direction across the ground, and it's very useful for its mapping function. This also helps it clean on dark carpet, which earlier iRobot models struggled with, and it also helps it cleaning in shadow and darker environments. The one downside of a V-Slam camera is that you do need to leave the lights on to clean. So if you want to clean at night, you just have to remember to leave lights on in those rooms. Under this cool gold cap here, we have the dustbin. You don't need to worry about this quite so much anymore because it will empty itself. However, you can still manually remove it and empty it. You'll also need to clean the filter every now and then just to keep it going. A fairly significant thing that I haven't even mentioned yet is how cool the robot looks. It looks very premium, which is a good thing considering its price point, but the gold, the materials, it's got a nice matte finish with a slight texture around here. Everything's very well thought out. It looks very solid and it feels like a tank. It doesn't have that rattly plastic sound every time you move it. It feels very solid and well made. The S9 made all of our cleaning tests look a breeze. It scored close to 100% when we weighed out different materials on our deep pile carpet. At least anything it missed was outside the accuracy levels of our scales. We tested it with rice, fruit loops and seeds and it comfortably removed them all. The dirt detect feature is another iRobot patent and you can see the robot backing up in repeating areas as it recognizes that the floor there is particularly dirty. On the hard floor, it was equally impressive. 
on this test, the robots usually yeet seeds or rice around with the side brush, but this one just calmly sweeps it into the dustbin. The only downside on hard floor is that you'll need a separate robot for mopping. It removed all of the hair and a lot more than average actually made it into the dustbin. There was still some tangled on the brush, but it was mostly around the edges and it is easier to remove than a bristled brush. I know a guy with a husky who tried the most expensive robot on the market and it really struggled with that level of hair. He borrowed my S9 to try it and it got it all on the first clean. Real life tests like that are way more compelling than any stage test, so I'm pretty confident that for sheer vacuuming performance, the S9 will be best for pet owners. It's notable as well that the Auto Empty Dock had no issues with husky levels of hair. Because of all that extra suction, it does sound like a vacuum. It's quite loud at 73 decibels, and you wouldn't want to watch TV while it's cleaning in the same room. The iRobot app is a little bit different to many of them on the market, but most people seem to prefer it because it's quite simple. You have the option to send it home. As you can see, it's sitting right next to me, so it's not on the dock. Normally, that would just say, start a clean. If we go into the map option, you will see that we are currently learning a new map because we had to reset it while we filmed this. Once that map is created, you can go into it and you can add those virtual barriers or you can send it to specific rooms and set up all your cleaning schedules like that. You can also save favorite cleaning schedules. This means that you can save a specific one that does the kitchen and the pantry and the dining area so that it will just do those areas after you've finished dinner. Once we create a schedule, we can start it at this time, we can repeat it on whichever days we want, and we can click schedule. You can also schedule it to clean automatically when you leave home. If you enable this, you can use your location services so that your phone knows that you've left home and it will start a clean. Otherwise, you can connect it with a few other automatic options as well. Under the cleaning preferences, we have the option to do multiple passes of each room. We have the option to change the suction levels. You can turn, change it from eco, which will be a little bit quieter, through to turbo, which will do a real deep clean, but it will use that battery life up a lot quicker. Under the careful drive option, there's a setting to make it a little bit more gentle on walls and furniture, which is obviously nice. Under the cleaning history, you can see our cleaning tests. Here you can see the area it cleaned, which looks accurate, of course. It took four minutes on this pass. It cleaned two square meters. When it's a tiny area like this, it will pass it over twice. And then you can see that there is a dirt event. This is when the robot has detected that it's particularly dirty and it will focus on that area by going forwards and backwards until it's all been removed. So despite the J7 being a more recent model and the S7 Max also being released and other competitors coming out to the market, the S9 Plus is still the very best vacuum on carpet. It did exceptionally well, by far the best we've ever tested on all of our tests. It didn't just get them all, which they sometimes do, but it did it quite easily without flicking much around. I have total confidence that regardless of what sort of pets you have, you will love this robot. It will do an awesome job on that pet here. The only thing to keep in mind as a potential con is that the battery life isn't very long. So it's best if you have a big home, if you can clean while you're not at home, as it will need to recharge and resume a few times. It's also quite loud. So again, you probably don't want to clean as much when you're at home. The navigation isn't quite as satisfying as some of the LiDAR options, but it still covers everywhere and it won't make any material difference in the long run. Those iRobot patents like the dual roller brushes, the dust detect feature, the dustbin full detect sensor are still super relevant and when you've got way more suction than any other iRobot on the market. It's still the best option on carpet, particularly because of that D shape. I would recommend this robot for medium to large homes with mostly carpet. It's particularly good for pet hair or people with allergies as it will remove more than any other robot on the market as far as I'm aware. If you're looking at other options, consider watching this video as well. Otherwise, please leave any questions you may have in the comments below and we'll do our best to give you proper detailed answers. Otherwise, subscribe as we have other cool content coming and other options.